let us see now what measurement uncertainty is. And then let us see this on an example of a glass of water. Water is the most important liquid in our lives. We all drink a lot of water and it is very important that drinking water is healthy. And one part of its healthiness comes from the content of minerals. There are always some small amounts of salts in this water and many of those salts are even somewhat good for our health but some however are toxic. And if we speak about toxic minerals or toxic salts, we first of all speak about different metal cations. And let us examine a toxic metal, lead. There's always some small amount of lead in drinking water, but as long as it's small enough, it's not really harmful for our health. But it's important that the small uh, level, it does not get too high, and therefore it's important to make chemical analysis of water to determine whether it is suitable for drinking or not. So our measurement in this case is lead content in water and we denote it by C. And we measure it in micrograms per liter. this concentration can assume different values. Therefore, we have here an axis. Concentration axis. And in, in order to make this example more concrete, let us also put some real concentration values on this axis. So this is 5. This is 6. And this is 7 micrograms per liter. Now, if we again take this glass of water, then obviously there's a certain number of lead ions swimming around in this water, meaning there is some true concentration of lead in this water. And if we were able to count those lead ions, we would know how much there are. Unfortunately, and this is true for almost all analytical chemistry. We almost never can really count molecules or atoms, meaning the true value will almost always remain unknown for us. And from the point of view of measurement science, we can say that the true value is an abstract concept. So, even though we are always aiming at the true value with our measurements, we almost never can really achieve it. Let us denote this true value here now. And let's assume it's somewhere here. So we call it C true. And according to this scale, it's equal to 5.7 micrograms per liter. Now, we optimize our measurement procedures in such a way that we would get our measurement result as close to the true value as possible. But we almost never exactly achieve it and we almost never will know if we achieved or not. So now let us suppose that our measured value in this case happens to be 6.1. Milli micrograms per liter. Now, the difference between the true value and the measured value is called error. And we denote error by delta. And delta is equal to C measured minus C true. Yeah. 
Now, as true value for us is an abstract concept, so is also the error. Because if we would know what the error is, then by obviously knowing our measured value, we would be able to calculate the true value. But this is not possible. So, unfortunately, people cannot use the concept of error or true value for characterizing the quality of this measured value here. So, what people do instead, they define a range around this measured value and they define this range in such a way that the true value would be within this range with high probability. So, and this range is called uncertainty range. And the half width of this range is called uncertainty. We can denote it by u. And in this case, the uncertainty is equal to 0.5. micrograms per liter. Now, if we have made this measurement and obtained this measurement result, and we have made uncertainty estimation, taking into account all the uncertainty sources which are influencing the measurement result, and we arrive at this uncertainty estimate, we can present our measurement result. And this would look like this. Result, our C is equal 6.1 plus minus 0.5 micrograms per liter. So, instead of trying to give the exact true value or the difference from the true value, which we cannot do, we give this range, and this range means that with high probability the true value lies within this range. So this result tells to a person that looks at this result, that the true value of lead in this water is between 5.6 and 6.6 .6 micrograms per liter. And as we see, in this particular case, it fully holds because the true value is 5.7 it would be fair to ask, why am I speaking about high probability? Why don't I say that the true value certainly lies within region? We will see later on that almost never we can present uncertainty in such a way that it embraces the true value with 100% probability. Almost always uncertainty presentation is probabilistic. We will see later on that this way of writing is actually not enough if we want to correctly present measurement result. But that will come later and for the moment this way of presenting the result is, for this example, sufficient. It is interesting to ask now, as we have received this kind of result, can we drink this water or not? Is this level of lead in drinking water in the permissible region or not? The permissible value of lead concentration in drinking water in the European Union is 10 micrograms per liter. We see that 6.1 of course is significantly below 10, 
but we also must take into account the uncertainty, meaning in principle the true value could also be somewhere higher here. As I said, uncertainty range never can have 100% probability, but it is good to know that probability outside of this range here decreases exponentially, so that with very high probability the value is within this range, and if we already would go to 5 to 7 range, the probability would be extremely high, so that the probability of, B of the true content being somewhere above there is very, very low. So that, yes, this water is fully suitable for drinking.